Hello, my name is Dr. Kimberly Cheatham, and welcome to this presentation on the adnexal mass. The objectives for this presentation are listed here. The term adnexa refers to the tissues adjacent to the uterus, which include the ovary, fallopian tube, and their associated ligaments and blood vessels. Note that the postmenopausal ovary is normally smaller than the ovary in a reproductive age woman. When an adnexal mass is found, either from a patient complaint of symptoms or by chance on examination or imaging studies, one of the first goals is to determine whether the adnexal mass is cancer or benign. Identifying the etiology of an adnexal mass typically requires ultrasound in addition to the history and physical examination. Selective laboratory tests can also aid in the diagnosis. As you build a differential diagnosis, consider the patient's age, presentation, medical and family history, as well as lab values and ultrasound characteristics. These next few slides review common etiologies of an adnexal mass, such as a functional cyst described below. Other etiologies for an adnexal mass are listed here. Realize that what seems to be an adnexal mass can actually be caused by a non-gynecological etiology, such as these cysts occurring in the omentum. Masses can also arise from the bowel or kidney. As you take the patient's history, consideration of the patient's age can provide assistance with a differential diagnosis. A female infant and even a fetus can develop an adnexal mass. In this age group, adnexal masses are usually benign, however, they should be referred for follow-up ultrasounds. Adnexal masses in children can be benign or malignant. The most common type of malignant ovarian mass in a child is a germ cell tumor. Reproductive age women are most likely to have a physiologic cyst as the cause of an adnexal mass. An adnexal mass in a postmenopausal woman is also most likely to be benign, but the chance of ovarian cancer is higher in this age group. Risk factors for ovarian cancer elicited from the patient's history include nulliparity, a history of infertility, and endometriosis. Family history of breast, colon, or ovarian cancer also increases the risk that the patient's adnexal mass is ovarian cancer. If the patient reports pain associated with the adnexal mass, try to characterize the pain. This slide lists characteristics of pain that can be clues to the etiology of the mass. Other nonspecific GI symptoms, such as bloating and early satiety, should be reviewed with the patient. It is important to perform a pelvic examination with a patient who has an adnexal mass. This slide lists findings that may point to a particular diagnosis. A breast exam should also be performed in older patients because the ovary is a common site for metastatic breast cancer and for metastatic colon cancer as well. The clinical presentation of the patient will direct which laboratory tests are most appropriate. In a reproductive age female, ordering a beta HCG will rule out an ectopic or other pregnancy-related adnexal changes if it returns negative. A CBC with differential can provide important information if an infection is present. If cancer is possible, tumor markers can be obtained. Tumor markers are blood tests that represent a pathologic process, in this case ovarian cancer. Several tumor markers are listed on this slide. The tumor marker CA125 should be obtained in any postmenopausal woman with an adnexal mass. CA125 is less helpful in premenopausal women because it can be elevated with pregnancy, pelvic infection, endometriosis, and other benign causes. In a postmenopausal woman, greater than 35 is elevated, greater than 100 is very worrisome. CA125 is not a good screening tool for early ovarian cancer, however, because it's elevated in only 50% of early stage cancer. Ultrasound imaging is the cornerstone for evaluation of an adnexal mass. Certain ultrasound findings are consistent with a benign process. One characteristic of a benign mass is the finding of a simple cyst, which is a fluid-filled sac without any solid components or septations. Other typically benign findings include an endometrioma or a dermoid cyst, which will be described on the ultrasound report. Ultrasound findings that suggest malignancy include solid and cystic components in the mass, thick walls, abnormal findings on both ovaries, a large size, and the presence of free intra-abdominal fluid or ascites. 
Most ovarian cancers occur in women over the age of 50 years and are of epithelial cell origin. Unfortunately, most ovarian cancers are difficult to detect until an advanced stage when the prognosis is poor. Symptoms are vague and the physical examination is limited unless the cancer is advanced. There is also no effective screening method currently available for ovarian cancer. After you've taken your patient's history, performed a physical examination, ordered a pelvic ultrasound and possibly other lab work, the next step is to determine the appropriate management. If a woman is premenopausal, the chance that the adnexal mass is cancer is low. Thus, if the mass is simple, found only on one side, and measures less than 10 centimeters, follow the recommendations listed below. If the mass is complex with solid and cystic parts, found on both ovaries or greater than 10 centimeters in size, refer for surgery. In a postmenopausal woman, the chance that an adnexal mass is cancer is higher. Consequently, the patient must meet all of the following criteria to allow for expectant management instead of surgery. These criteria include that the patient is asymptomatic, the cyst is simple and less than 5 centimeters, and that the CA125 level is normal. If the patient has symptoms, if the cyst is complex, greater than 5 centimeters, or increasing in size, or if the CA125 is elevated, refer the patient for surgery. In conclusion, it is common to find an adnexal mass by chance on an ultrasound or CAT scan. You should consider the entire clinical picture as you decide patient management. Remember that pelvic ultrasound, especially transvaginal ultrasound, is the first-line imaging technique for the evaluation of an adnexal mass. This is the end of the presentation on the adnexal mass.